Hi, I'm Jeff Kleinman, the Editor-in-Chief of BevNet. I'm here with Remy Castillo, CEO of Moonshine Sweet Tea. Now, Moonshine has been one of the real growth stories in the industry in the past couple of years. Tell me, Remy, what is it that's uh, created this growth since you launched in 2015? Well, you know, I think there's uh, a few factors. One is a lot of really good people. Uh, we have a great team of people back home and in Texas that work on the brand from social media to our ASMs that are in the field working to our brand ambassadors, you know, people that are really trying to tell the story about Moonshine Sweet Tea. And it's an interesting story. Um, Moonshine Sweet Tea, the original recipe started in 1946, Jeff. Uh, the founder of our company, Joe Lee Porter, took his great-grandfather's recipe and uh, approached a sister of his in Austin, Texas, back in 2009 and asked her if he could produce product in her restaurant so that he could then take it to market. Uh, she did so reluctantly. And with, he was selling it in farmer's markets for a while. That's exactly right. So started selling our concentrated tea, which we still sell today, uh, 16 and 32 ounce Boston round bottles. Uh, started selling that literally in a farmer's market. Um, and then from there, uh, we end up partnering with Joe Lee, our majority shareholder, found him at a farmer's market uh -huh. uh, in 2013. Um, and then we spent the greater part of about two years, uh, market research and development, a lot of mistakes, yep. uh, a lot of learning lessons, and uh, eventually took the product to market, which was our ready-to-drink versions of our tea uh, with our original and six flavors. And HEB was our very first retailer that took us on as a, uh, you know, large grocery retailer in about 34 stores. Uh, and then from there, it just progressively started to grow in Texas and started it with other retailers. And that's really kind of how it got started. Now, Texas has been a hotbed for a lot of ready-to-drink tea brands. Yep. And you sort of represent the next generation of brand coming out of that state. Yep. You've got a strong Texas core, yep. and yet you've grown throughout the South. And I wonder, how much is your hiring sort of constantly trying to keep up with the growth, and how do you, how do you think through that hiring process? Well, you know, you, you mentioned great brands, and that's true. I mean, I think, you know, Christopher Clay and David Smith and those guys with Sweet Leaf did a great job of paving the way for the tea industry and for entrepreneurs like ourselves who are trying to get into this market and grow. And... You know, it's all about key people, and I think David and Christopher Clayton, those guys, they hired really good people along the way, and we're trying to do the same thing. And we've gone out and we've hired some really good, you know, marketing people. We've hired some really good. We just hired a new EVP of sales, John Shu. Yeah. Um, we hired a new brand manager who used to work for Vitamin Water and formerly Power Crunch. Uh, and it's about putting the right people in place. It takes a village in order to get this done, um, and having the key people and the key positions to kind of help pick the ball up and carry it and move forward is critical and crucial. Uh, we're currently hiring some new people, some trade development managers that we're looking for. Um, in 2018, we're going to be hiring some key account managers. So we're trying to build all the infrastructure right now so that we can continue to keep growing and get to that next level. And that's 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 important. Create a scaled kind of business yeah, Yes, model. sir. Absolutely. So let's talk channel strategy for a little bit. Sure. How does convenience fit into what you ultimately want to do with this brand? So, you know, convenience is obviously the available area that I think everybody wants to get into, but for us, it was all about grocery starting out. We really wanted to build a, a strong foothold in a lot of the key retailers in our market, HEB and the Kroger's and the Albertsons and Tom Thumbs and so on. So we'd really create a brand presence and then naturally begin to start expanding into the C-Store market. And our ACV was very low last year in convenience, and we're starting to increase that this year, and it's going to be a focus. And as we do, uh, it's about picking the right retailers. It's about picking the right partners to go into the C-Store stores with. Um, and then, you know, people that are looking to help support the brand. Uh, we were very fortunate early on with a lot of our key uh, retailers in the grocery channel. They're very supportive. And yeah. so that's our, our strategy going into 2018 is picking the right C stores to do business with, people that want to help support the brand, um, the people that are looking to help support emerging brands that are that are authentic and that are that are simple ingredients. And I mean, when you look at our ingredients deck, it's very simple ingredients deck. It's not, you know, anything crazy. It's brewed organic tea and fair trade and it's the process and the way we do it. Um, and we want to just kind of take that message now to the C-Store channel this year. And that's a big focus. And this is why we're here at Nax. This is a great show. When you talk about retailer support, uh, how do you like to see that manifest? Is it through merchandising and end caps, or is it through a knowledgeable staff that's ready to direct people to the brand? 
That's a great question. I, I think it's probably both of those. I mean, I, you know, we all would love to have an in-cap in every retailer in America. Who doesn't want that presence? But it's also about the knowledge uh, at the store level with management. And that, that's, that's, that falls in part on us. And that's, again, we're hiring the key account and the right people to help drive that message home to the retailers and, and create that share of mind. Uh, but when anytime you do have a retailer that is you know, has the product knowledge and is helping push the brand for you, it just, I mean, it, it helps so much. What are you hoping to do as 2018 approaches? I think continue to keep growing uh, is first, first goal. Uh, finding, again, the right people. Um, and then slowly starting to expand into other channels of distribution. Um, in Texas, we're focusing on some food service. That's one of the channels we're focusing on. Uh, yeah. We've partnered up with Benny Keith, which has been a great distributor for us, uh, focusing on key retailers in those markets to help drive awareness. So, you know, there's a lot of great restaurants in Austin, like Home Slice sells our product. And, you know, it's an iconic restaurant in South Congress. And you go to Austin, Texas, and uh, Schlossky's in Texas has started to carry the product. And Taco Deli, and places that where tourists come come into Austin. Yeah, to get their taco experience. And they see the product and then they leave Austin and go, hey, you know, I experienced this really cool brand or this cool product. There's a lot of great brands in Austin, Texas. And, and a lot of these great brands that you see in Austin are in these same places. And that's kind of been a route to market that they've taken. And it's time for us to start expanding into those, uh, you know, office complexes. There's an opportunity there uh, with, you know, those kiosk and the, the those retail outlets that where you have a captive audience at a, at a you know a Google type environment or a Microsoft type sure. setting. The, so that's going to be the a co-working space. Yes, sir. Such. Absolutely. Now you've got a, a product with a fairly sweet profile. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's in the it's in the name, right? Moonshine sweet tea. Right. Uh, a lot of the consumer trends have been moving away from sugar and sweet. Uh -huh. How do you make the argument to retailers that there's still a place for this kind of product? Great question. So innovation is part of it. We are a sweet tea, sweet tea brand. That's who we are. Uh, but in 2018, we'll be launching a five-calorie version of our teas that are sugar-free. Um, all the R&D is happening as we speak. Um, we have seven flavors kind of in the pipe right now with the hopes of launching four of them. Um, and picking the right four. So we're doing some focus groups right now. We're doing some studies, some market analysis to determine which flavors we want to bring to market. Uh, but that's part of it is innovation. Um, and then expanding our, our concentrate lines. Uh, we've toyed around with a, a non-sweet concentrate. Yep. Um, so we're, we're, we're trying to be innovative. And yeah. uh, we also have a, a half and half, like a sweet tea lemonade that we're coming out with next year. So it's all about innovation and continuing to keep uh, moving towards products that are going to be in demand. Uh, but we won't go away from our core brand. This is our core brand, but you know, offering options and a, that yeah. other other options to the market. One of the good things about a strong tea brand is you can do a lot of variations on a theme, a lot of flavor innovations, right. a lot of a lot of caloric innovations. But still, sweet tea is the, is it just a question of telling the retailer, hey, someone's always going to want a sweet tea. Well, that's part of it, right? I mean, if you look at sweet tea, the history of sweet tea, sweet tea's been around for 100 plus years. And it's gonna be around for 100 plus years more. And it's the reason why Pepsi, Coke, and all the big boys are still in the business of sweet tea. Sure. Uh, there's a demand for it. Um, and it's about, again, being innovative and bringing products to market that you know are gonna be in demand. We know that tea index is well in a lot of these retailers that we're in. It's about, again, picking the right retailers, picking the right regions, picking the right demographics to go after. Um, and it's, again, you know, Moonshine Sweet Tea is the core, but we will continue to be innovative and we will continue to bring products to market that are going to be um, available to consumers who may not want a sweet version, you know, maybe want a sweet tea, but don't want it as sweet as we, you know, currently have. Yeah. So that's, that's, all, that's all part of it. All right. Well, Remy, best of luck to you. Thank you. And we look forward to watching you grow. Thanks hey. very much. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thank you yep. so much. From Nax, I'm Jeff Kleinman. Thank you.